Hey guys, so today we are going to be planting some ginger and some turmeric. I'm also going to be starting some seeds. I'm going to start some onions and some uh, carnations because these need some time before we can put them outside. So you, for onions, you need about uh, 10 to 12 weeks before you plant them outside. And right now we are in late January so it's time for me to start my onions and with ginger and turmeric you want to start them super early uh, so that they can uh, grow their uh, rhizomes and um, have the time to grow the rhizomes especially because we live in a cold environment we have a short growing season so I need to start these early if I started them even earlier that would have been better but now is the time that I have and I'm going to be starting them I actually bought these uh, from um, I got them from Walmart there they were in the organic section and they are kind of a, a little bit shriveled I bought them about a month ago and I wanted to do that this project about a month ago and I haven't gotten to it so uh, we're gonna see what we can salvage from them it looks like this over here is better uh, so when you want to um, grow ginger and uh, full disclosure this is my first time growing ginger and turmeric but I've looked up how to how to grow it and uh, I've seen a lot of people grow it and um, I'm pretty confident that I can do this let's see how, how it works so both ginger and turmeric require a long growing season uh, about six months or so uh, of growing season so uh, of of growing time uh, so right now we are in January late January it would have been better again if I started them early January um, so by starting them this early I would have uh, more time for them to grow outdoors and uh, grow their rhizomes uh, gin this this is actually a rhizome uh, if you have ever planted uh, something like uh, the uh, bearded iris uh, they have a similar kind of rhizome also a lot of plants have this type of rhizome uh, balloon flowers have it uh, and um, I've seen uh, people who grow dahlias it looks something similar to this not exactly but something like that uh, a lot of plants have rhizomes and they spread by rhizomes and that's what ginger does and it kind of spreads horizontally uh, again if you think of the bearded irises that's what they do they spread horizontally so if you want to grow these in containers you want to consider to uh, grow them in wide containers so that they can spread horizontally and not be hindered by the sides of the pot because as soon as they hit that uh, the sides of the pot uh, it's going to kind of uh, signal to the plant there's no more room to grow and you're not going to be able to get as much of your ginger as you would have if you have uh, if if you had them growing in a um, wider pot uh, it's not so much the depth that matters but it's the width that matters of course they are going to spread some roots but their roots are not super deep maybe they're about i don't know like six inches or eight inches deep maximum uh same thing with the turmeric they're I believe in the same family and they grow pretty much the same uh, and uh, both ginger and turmeric have uh, super health benefits they're um, anti-cancer they're anti-inflammatory they have all the health benefits that you can think of uh, they help uh, uh, they help by they aid in stopping and or minimizing dementia and Alzheimer's and all that stuff and they're they're super food basically and uh, having them fresh is uh, uh, increases the benefit of the plant uh, and uh, this the turmeric has uh, something called curcumin in it which is the element that contains the most health benefits in it uh, so I have to grow these I'm going to be using some potting soil you don't need seed starting because uh, uh, these are rhizomes they're not seeds they don't need the same fluffiness that the seed starting mix has also they're going to require more nutrients than uh, the uh, seed starting mix uh, with a potting soil is going to have a diff different kind of nutrients than your seed starting mix uh, also if you are planning on starting them in the same pot you don't 
again, you don't want to start in a seed starting mix because you want the mixture to be the proper uh, kind of soil uh, for the uh, for these uh, ter uh, rhizomes for the turmeric and the uh, and the ginger. You want a fluffy soil. You don't want it to be condensed uh, because if you're growing something underground, any type of plant that grows underground, uh, like uh, with rhizomes or with or like potatoes, like root vegetables or something like that, you want the ground to be fluffy so that those um, rhizomes or uh, or root vegetables can grow, uh, it can expand without anything hindering them. Because if you have a compacted soil, the plant would have a difficult time uh, growing. Uh, it's uh, its rhizomes under the dirt under under the soil uh, so you want to provide them also uh, with a good uh, fertilizer if you are growing them in pot I would use uh, I w what I would personally do if I was growing ginger in pots is I would um, give them first uh, a an all-purpose uh, for an organic all-purpose fertilizer a slow re slow release fertilizer so uh, to kind of uh, vitalize the soil in there and then I would uh, do a um, bi-weekly or a monthly uh, fertilization schedule with a liquid fertilizer uh, because um, that's going to give them the nutrients a lot faster and uh, since they are in a pot the, the nutrients are going to leak somewhat from the pot because you are watering and some of the, those nutrients are going to drain down through the drainage holes uh, so you, you need to be replacing those nutrients uh, often so that the plants can grow. Uh, I mean if anything growing them in pot and following a, uh, a, a good fertilization schedule uh, is going to probably give you better roots than if you were or rhizomes, <laughs> because these are actually not roots, uh, better rhizomes if you, than if you were going to grow them in the soil, directly in the soil. Especially if you live in a cold environment, you can, if you want, bring your plants indoors and have them continue to grow indoors. Me personally, I don't have the light requirements to grow these indoors, uh, because they do, well with ginger, they, you, they can take a part shade environment, uh, but with a turmeric, I cannot grow it indoors because it's a tall plant. It can grow up to about my height. I cannot put it in, under grow lights in my grow room, and I uh, don't have uh, the proper light for it in, indoors. Uh, when it comes to ginger, I probably can grow it indoors because it might receive enough sunlight for it to grow indoors if I put it next to a window uh, somewhere in the house. Uh, that sh probably should be enough for it, but I have a lot of ginger over, over here, so um, maybe I might grow one and keep it indoors just to kind of continue to have a plant growing indoors uh, and uh, continue to have those rhizomes so that I can um, have something to plant the next year. Uh, so uh, we'll see what I'll do, I don't know. I have some containers to start them in, so let me grab them. So I got this tray over here, it's just an aluminum uh, baking tray, it's, how big is it? I don't know how big it, it is, uh, something, it's like 9 by 6 or something like that, 9 by 8, 9 by, like 9 by 8, 10 by 8, something like that, I don't know, something like that, <laughs> anyways. so. I think this should fit all the ginger roots in here and they're not going to stay in this tray. I'm going to put them in here so that they can start their uh, growing process and then once I start seeing growth on them then I can maybe transplant them into bigger pots but I am suspecting because of uh, the cold environment that we have over here and even if uh, our house is heated it kind of feels cold even though the house is warm it's still kind of feels cold for you know because it's winter so I don't expect them to grow um, vigorously right now indoors uh, but uh, I could be wrong I don't know because uh, uh, they might prove me wrong I don't know um, but it, if they do grow super quickly and unlike the, I'm just unlike I'm expecting them to I could just uh, 
transfer each of them into a pot so that they can grow separately. I'll have to find some shallow pot uh, that I can uh, fit each of them in, uh, the, and shallow white pots. And, um, and then when it's time to pl plant them outside after the frost, uh, I can transplant them outside. I'll probably wait a little bit after the frost so that the weather kind of warms up for them because they do like a warm weather. They are a tropical plant. Same with the turmeric. Uh, so I'll probably wait a little bit after frost. Once kind of things warm up a little bit outside, that's when I would transplant them. Maybe when the weather is like about 60 or 70, something like that outside. That's when I would transplant them outside. Uh, so this tray is going to be for the for the ginger. And this one over here, this is just a, um, I don't know, it was from rotisserie chicken, I think. Uh, and I washed it. I grew some stuff in it last year. I don't remember what I grew in here. It has a dome. So I could use the dome, put it on it to kind of provide it with some humid environment to have it uh, sprout quicker. Uh, I'm also going to be putting these on a heating mat down in the grow room so that they could grow. I could also just leave them over here, but I just don't want the clutter up here in the house and um, the kids accidentally knocking them if I just put them on the floor or something. And I don't want them taking surface area on my tables uh, because we use the tables. <laughs> so uh, I'll, just, I'll just put them downstairs on the heating mat. Uh, and also for this one, sorry for the noise, for this one, I'm going to put this dome over it. It doesn't fit perfectly uh, over it, but it's going to help with maintaining humidity in there. I probably don't need to do that, but I'm just taking this as an extra precaution because I do have a fan blowing downstairs uh, in the grow room and I don't want the soil to dry out. I do check on my plants every day because uh, I go to check on them every day and because that's I have a laundry room over there too so I'm doing laundry every day I check on my plant like I'm a, a million times a day <laughs> uh, so uh, I probably don't need to put the humidity dome on them but it's just gonna make my life a little bit easier uh, if I uh, notice anything uh, growing on the on the surface of the soil then I'll just take the humidity dome off of it uh, to prevent that from happening uh, and I'm also going to be growing if I have the time I'm hoping that I do have the time tonight I'm going to be growing some uh, yellow sweet uh, ye yellow sweet Spanish onions and mm, some red onions and I'm going to grow a whole lot of them because we eat a lot of onions I'm going to grow two trays of the yellow sweet Spanish onions and one tray uh, of the red onions. I'm going to divide the tray into two sections and I'm going to grow two different types of onions. So enough talking, let's go ahead and start <laughs> and then I'll show you what I did. I got here some organic potting soil and I'm going to fill this with, whoop, fill this with it. So this soil is already a little bit moist. I don't really need to wet it. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just going to fill you know the trays with it. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, I so. am a monkey. I can spin around. I'm, I'm just going to make sure to rice. break up any clumps in here. I can be my stretch, stretch, stretch. I can be my stretch, stretch, stretch. I can put my... And I'm gonna fill this one also. over here. I don't believe this is organic. It doesn't say anything on it that it's organic. 
uh, so I don't even know if this is going to grow or anything or do or do anything. Uh, it's a little bit shriveled up because it's been in the fridge for about two weeks, I think. Uh, so I'm just gonna bury it slightly in here, and I'm gonna put it in the middle so that if it does start to grow uh, while it's indoors, it can have some space over here to grow. And I'm just gonna barely cover it. I don't need to put tons of soil over it. And I'm going to give it a little bit of moisture. Uh, now this doesn't actually have any holes on the bottom, but that's okay because I'm not going to give it a lot of moisture. I'll keep an eye on it so that it doesn't dry out and it doesn't rot. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of water. You can see the soil is moist already. It's not repelling the water. If you have super dry soil, you want to wet it before you put it in your containers so that uh, it can absorb the water. And you know what? I'm a little bit nervous <laughs> that I put too much, but I don't think so. No, I think we're okay because the bottom is, is still not moist. You know what? I'm just going to mix it a little bit. It's making me nervous because I don't have any drain holes and the top is super, super moist. Okay. I think I'm gonna put some in, oops, put some in here and take some of this soil over here. This way it's not insanely moist. Oops. Better safe than sorry. Okay, that's better. Alright, so it's holding on. It's, there's a little bit of moisture coming out, but it's not like dripping wet. The soil is holding on together. That's it. That's good. That's what I want. Okay, I'm gonna put this soil back in here. Such a mess. I wish this table was a little bit higher. I'm filming this over here in the dining room because it's uh, I have a lot more space over here than in the kitchen uh, to put my lights and uh, to have all my stuff out. So. But this table is going to break my back. I probably should, should sit down instead. I think that's what I'm going to do. Alright. I'm going to grab a chair and sit down because my back is starting to hurt. <laughs> so now I'm just going to put this dome over it. Oh, this way. And I'll just keep an eye on it. If it needs any moisture or if it's too moist in there, I'll see what I need to do. I'm going to add some water to this tray also, not too much, <laughs> and I'm going to mix it, I think it's better. This way the moisture is evenly distributed, because I don't want to keep watering these all the time, uh, It's. I think it is better to just um, keep the soil moist over time because it's difficult to kind of keep this soil moist with this kind of water. I'd have to mist it instead uh, to make sure that this the soil is moist evenly. And This one uh, with this uh, watering can it just kind of uh, waters in sp spots so the moisture doesn't really spread out. Um, so. I just, I would rather do this and then later on mist it as the time goes by. I don't have gloves on purpose. Whenever I'm starting seeds, I find that uh, wearing gloves kind of uh, hinders me. I don't like feeling the dirt under my nails. That's what gets me the most. But uh, I will just wash my hands and everything will be okay. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I do like feeling the dirt with my hands but not under my nails. <laughs> Alright, I think this is moist enough. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's holding on together and it's not super wet. So I'm just gonna cram these ginger pieces together. This one looks moldy so I'm not gonna even bother planting it. They're not super shriveled. They're just a tiny bit shriveled 
and you want to look for growth points. So I see some over here. Let me see if I can show you. I'm gonna. I'm not. I don't want to touch the camera because my hands are super dirty. But I'm gonna bring the ginger next to you. So you can see, there's this growth po growth point over here. There's another one over here. There's I think. When I bought it and it was fresh, I could see every growth point, but I'm hoping that it's just gonna start growing. I can see one right there, it's kind of hidden. I wanna see if I can find you a better one. You can see one right there. They're not green, but I can kind of tell where they are. All right, there are some over here. Sorry for my fingers. But that's how it is. It's gardening, so we're gonna get dirty. <laughs> uh, so with the ginger, it, it is best to plant it whole rather than splitting it. You can split it if you want to, but you're not going to end up with a larger rhizome uh, when you split it. You're going to end up with small rhizomes. Uh, when you do keep it all together it's going to give you big rhizomes because it's going to have a lot more energy because it will put a lot more leafy growth into it this is actually part of the the stem for the stem to be big you want uh, a lot of leafy growth on it so that it can photosynthesize and uh, convert all that energy into starch and the starch is going to be stored in these rhizomes and the same with the turmeric anyways i don't think you can find large turmeric uh, it almost turmeric <laughs> uh, sold at the stores is going to be small uh, so I'm gonna see how much I can cram in here let's see and I think you want to try if you can see your growth points you want to try to have them facing up you can see I think that's probably where it was connected to the plant or to another rhizome. Looks like that is where it was connected to the plant over here. I think I can fit them this way. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna bury them a little bit under the soil, not too deep. I wanna have some soil on top and some soil on the bottom. These trays are shallow, and again, I'm not going to be keeping them in these trays. This, the reason for these, uh, for planting them in, in these trays is just to start the sprouting process. Once I start seeing growth on them, that's when I would uh, transplant them into pots if I have to, or outdoors if I can, if I'm able to, if the weather permits. I think I'm gonna need to add a little bit of a little bit more soil on top. And I'll miss this also. I just need to wash my hands and grab the mister and miss the surface so that this soil that's on top is also moist. It is slice slightly moist, but it's not moist enough to get these uh, rhizomes germinating. I got my mister over here. I'm just going to spritz the top a little bit so that the soil absorbs the moisture on the surface. I think this should be good enough. Just give it one good spray, one good spritz. All right, that's good enough. I'm gonna put the humidity dome on it. And I'm going to set it aside. And now we are going to work on starting our onions. Actually, I just wanna wipe the table. <laughs> this is stressing me out. Okay. I got some organic seed starting mix in here. I'm gonna pour it in here. Oops. And add in some water. take any big pieces out of this mixture. You could sift this before you start your seeds in it, but I'm just picking <laughs> picking out any big chunks uh, and 
than starting my seeds in there. It's not a big deal if there are some smaller chunks, that's not a big deal. I got these trays over here. These are the trays that I start for uh, that I use for my seed starting. I pr I love these trays and these are the platform that the that the wicking mat this is the platform that the wicking mat sits on and you have this tray over here and then you fold the sides of the wicking mat and it goes into the tray and then you put your seed cell your cells over the wicking mat and this is from Gardener's Supply not a sponsor but I just love this seed starting tray I this is my favorite ever and uh, I think uh, for and I think I'll probably won't use anything <laughs> other than this again I've been using this for a few years now and I love it it's my favorite thing you know you get these uh, cheap seed starting trays uh, that are kind of flimsy and they break down like the first season or second season you just use them for a couple seasons and that's it with this one you could use it over and over for so many years if you treat it well uh, I always uh, disinfect these trays with uh, a bleach and water solution I just soak them for 15 minutes and I kind of uh, soak them in the tray that they come in and uh, I flip them over I flip the seed starting tray over so that it can uh, be uh, so, uh, so that all sides <laughs> can get uh, disinfected and then I rinse them really well after I am making such a big mess and this is stressing me out so much. <laughs> Do you guys stress out by this kind of mess? I don't know, I'm this this kind of stuff stresses me out. <laughs> I hate messes. I don't mind dirt outside. I mind dirt inside. Dirt doesn't seem to belong inside. So I'm going to fill the trays first and then we are going to um, put the seeds in there. this tray over here so I'm gonna fill it with more seed starting mix just a little bit this is super dry look at the difference between most moist soil and dry soil you saw before the soil that I was adding the seed starting mix and the potting soil they were ugh, I can't breathe now all this dust ugh. okay this is um, super dry. I better add some water in here. And you can see how it's not really absorbing anything. Oops, I might have added too much water. The water's kind of floating in there. It's not doing anything. So I gotta mix it in there so that the soil can start absorbing it. You kind of have to agitate the soil so that it can start absorbing that water. Oh my goodness, I should not have done that. So I just want to do some comparison here before I start. This looks good. This uh, this soil over here is from, I'm not going to name the brand. <laughs> it's an unnamed brand. But the soil that I put in these trays over here, and you saw how luscious it looks 
This soil is from Espoma organic mix, organic seed starting mix, and this is the first time I use it and I really, really am loving it. Uh, I've uh, already started some seeds, the salvia seeds in this soil, and they're doing great. I just fertilized them the other day. Uh, they're starting, they just started their first set of true leaves, and they're looking amazing, and I haven't experienced any issues with this soil yet, and it's super fluffy. This one over here looks like uh, it has a lot of coir or maybe peat moss, maybe. I don't know, but I don't know. I'm kind of liking this soil over here, this from Espoma, better, and I'm glad I tried it. We'll see the difference <laughs> uh, between these trays, I guess. I mean, I'm gonna tell the difference on this side over here, how these seeds are gonna do. I assume they're all gonna germinate the same, but uh, we'll see what, what, how each side does uh, after as time goes by. So let's go ahead and fill this tray. doing another tray just for the carnations and asters uh, because I also want to start the asters a little bit earlier because they take about 120 days to maturity and um, that's when they start flowering so I would like to enjoy them more out for a longer period of time outside so if I start them earlier in the house then they would uh, be more mature and um, then they would probably mature quickly outside and be able to put out their blooms outside quicker. I would transfer them probably to bigger pots so that they can uh, kind of uh, spread their roots and grow and be more ready to start producing blooms earlier when I plant them outside. So I probably I'm not going to be planting the aster the carnations and the asters today. I'll start them on a different day uh, so you might see me <laughs> doing another seed starting videos with you guys right now I'm going to start the onions I was hoping to start the carnations today but my plans have changed this uh, this uh, container over here contains all the seeds that I'm going to be starting in the spring of course I'm not going to be starting everything at the same time uh, most of the seeds are going to be going in the beds, so I'm going to follow the uh, time that each seed, each type of seeds uh, needs to be planted outside, and uh, that's when I will plant them. I actually wrote uh, a list of all the seeds that I have in here in my uh, gardening journal, and I wrote uh, next to each type of seeds at what time I should either direct seed them or start them indoors. Uh, like uh, how many weeks uh, either before the frost or on actual the actual date that I'm going to be starting them like you know I'm giving myself uh, a, um, a a good uh, fudge uh, a good fudge time maybe like uh, a couple weeks or so of, to be able to start each of these seeds just in case if something happens you know life happens so I want to be able to have uh, some time to, to plant these seeds and uh, turns out I also have a whole lot more of uh, sugar and peas in here from Heaven's Harvest uh, and I haven't used these for a while and I'm sure they'll germinate fine for me because I'm continuously using these seeds even though they've been now what like seven years old seeds they're still good so let's see if I can find my onions this is uh, did I organize this it looks like it is organized, but I didn't put any dividers in here because this, I'm just going to be starting these. Um, yeah, there we go. These ones. Uh, this is just my spring pack. These, all these seeds are going to go back into the places where they belong after I am done with them. Uh, but these are the seeds that I'm going to be starting in the spring. That's all. This is, I don't know, can you guys see my head? I feel like I'm cut off over here. Uh, so I have to hunch over. 
Uh, this, this is the yellow sweet Spanish onions and the ruby red onions and the red burgundy onions. I haven't tried these two varieties yet. I'm going to be trying them out and seeing which one I like best. So that's why I'm doing uh, one tray for both of them and I'm going to divide them in half, uh, divide the tray in half between both of them. And uh, I got the sweet, uh, yellow sweet Spanish onions from Baker Creek last year and with uh, the, whoop, the red onions I got them from MI Gardener. And I also have some plant tags over here. I love these plant tags. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> I love uh, that they fit in here and I can put the dome over over it and it's fine. And I, I write usually on the front and on the back so that I can see uh, the tag from both sides um, if I flip this and anyway I could see this tag from either side so let's say I put it right here on this side I can see it from this side over here and I can see it from this side over here uh, so these are my favorite tags so far because I could just write on them horizontally and uh, they're uh, pretty uh, they're very they seem to be UV resistant uh, I like them a lot and I will put a link for them in the description box below and this is a garden uh, marker and I love this so much because it has a fine tip I prefer fine tip pens over the thicker ones uh, because uh, I I can kind of squish my words together if I need to I can fit more words in there if I have to uh, on the plant tag and this is also UV resistant and uh, it's a great pen. I love it. I got this last year. Uh, it's made in Germany and it's a pretty good pen. I'll also put a link for it in the description box below and a link for the seed trays and uh, actually they have a whole seed starting kind of kit with the trays and a seed starting mix and a whole lot of and everything that you might need. So let's go ahead. I think, I believe I do have a tag for the yellow, the sweet, I didn't, did I bring it? I don't think I brought it though. Might be outside still. Yeah, I think it's still outside. And you can see these have been outside in the elements, uh, sitting the whole season. And I got them inside this fall and I could see everything pretty clearly on them. Um, they're still pretty good. They're a little more brittle than they used to be, but they're still pretty good. Uh, I could use them again this season. So I saved the tags, at least most of the tags. I forgot some of the tags outside. I think the onion tags are still outside, but it's not a big deal. I'll just, I'll just write them again. I was thinking I could save on tags this way and I have to continue to buy more plastic. <laughs> I actually did a whole video on starting onions from seeds. Oh, I need this one. Uh, and I'll link that video in the description box below and at the end of this video so you can go ahead and check it out. And I'll also link the video of uh, uh, starting salvia from seed, perennial salvia. If you want to watch that, I'll link it at the end of this video. to not plant a couple of the varieties that I planted last year just because I find that I like this variety a lot more. I mean shallots are good but you can use only so much of them and I have freeze dried some of them uh, so uh, I can still use them throughout the year and if I find that I miss them the next season then I'll plant the season after this uh, some shallots and I'm not going to be planting uh, the uh, another variety of onion, um, what's it called? I forgot its name, but I planted it last year and I noticed that it didn't bulb up as big as the yellow, as the sweet, yeah, the yellow sweet Spanish onions. 
and I do love the yellow sweet Spanish onions. I like spicy onions, um, and when you do uh, caramelize them, they become sweet anyways, so it's not a big deal. And uh, I use onions, tons of onions. I mean, I cook with onions every single day, and there are dishes that use a whole lot of onions, like I don't know, ten onions or so. Uh, and I cook that dish sometimes once a week, <laughs> so. <laughs> I use a whole lot of onions uh, and um, we love onions so what can I say uh, so I'm gonna be planting these two trays with onions and this time I'm gonna actually plant less <laughs> seeds so that just so that it's easier to kind of uh, separate them and uh, also so that uh, they can kind of grow a little bit better in the in their cell trays so that I don't have to rush on planting them outside if something happens and I'm not able to plant them when I'm supposed to plant them it's okay if they stay a little bit longer in here and this way they could grow their roots and I won't have to worry about it so much uh, so I'm just gonna plant five seeds in each so uh, these cells have 24 seeds in here each of these cells so five times 24 let's see or uh, 25 to uh, 10 12 120 is that correct? Yes, 120 seeds in each cell. So 120, 120, uh, and that's 240, 240 onions, yellow onions. And then I'll have 120 red onions of two different varieties. Uh, so that's 60 onions of, uh, uh, 60 onions of each red varieties. That's pretty good, I think. Uh, I use a lot less red onions than I do uh, yellow onions. I don't cook as much with red onions. I prefer to use red onions fresh. Uh, anyways, the benefit of onions uh, is it's better. Health benefits of onions are better if you use it uh, fresh and especially with the red onions. Uh, most colorful food is, you know, uh, really good for you and especially when it's raw. Not everything is good for you when it's raw, but onions are good for you when they are raw. I hope I have enough seeds to plant the two trays. Let's see. I could be fooling myself. I might have to plant the variety that I did not like. Yes, sweetie. On the surface of the soil you need to cover them about a quarter inch deep so you're supposed to cover the seeds about you're supposed to bury the seeds about a quarter inch deep into the soil uh, so I just sprinkled them on the surface of the soil and then I'm going to go over them again and cover them with some more soil I have some extra soil over here I could just sprinkle them I wish I thought of that ahead of time that's uh -huh. I didn't think about that and I filled the seed trays I felt I filled the cell pretty full should have left a little bit of ex extra space for um, for me to be able to put extra soil on top but that's okay uh, now I'm gonna do this tray over here with also some yellow sweet Spanish onions of going over these cells uh, again with just one extra onion seed just in case if something does not germinate uh, so that I can be confident that I have <laughs> enough uh, onions. I also have a blog post on how to start onions from seeds 
indoors and uh, I will link that down in the description box below if you are more of a reader you can check that out or even if you're not a reader but uh, that blog post contains a lot of uh, information valuable information uh, that uh, you can benefit from and uh, it talks about I, will, I don't remember honestly what I included in it but I believe it talks uh, about from the beginning from so from seed starting all the way to harvesting I believe. Yeah, I think I have enough in here to add one more seed to each of these cells, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now I have six, cell, six seeds in each of these cells, uh, and I'm uh, kind of feeling a little bit off because a lot of sixes in here <laughs> if you're getting what I'm saying <laughs> six 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 <laughs> I feel like I need to make it a seven <laughs> it's all right should have left it at five <laughs> all right so now we're gonna start over here with the red uh, ruby red onion on this side, all these three, all these th uh, from here to here. So these three sets over here are going to be the ruby red onions, and this is going to be the red burgundy onions on this side. Let's go ahead. We'll make this a seven instead of a six. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make it a seven. <laughs> Planted. Now I'm gonna go wash my hands and then spritz them. I like to spritz them just to make sure that the top surface of the soil touches the seeds and they this way they're they have a better luck at germinating. And I love this mister because it doesn't displace the water at all. It has a very gentle fine mist. Did I say displace the water? I meant displace the soil. <laughs> it is displacing water. Now I'm going to put the dome on them. And we are going to take them downstairs to the grow room. Let's go ahead. Grab the heat mat. Oh. I think if I put it this way, it should fit both trays. I could put them horizontally so that both of them could fit over here. And I need to connect it. Oh. Manual fell over. <laughs> So, yeah, I can hook it right here. This is just a thermostat that allows me to control the temperature on the trays. Oh, I think I'm putting it in backwards. There we go. And I'm gonna have to connect it to the power directly, not to that outlet over there, because that's where. Um, that's connected to a timer that allows the lights over here to turn on and off automatically so that I don't have to fiddle with them. So I have to connect this to a power outlet uh, that's separate from that. 
So I'm actually going to have to switch things around over here. I need to move the heating mat over here because it's closer to the power outlet on this side and I should have thought of that earlier, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and do that. I know the camera's crooked, but I don't have my stand right now. I also need to raise these lights because they're a little bit too low. So you know, I'll do this side over here so that you guys can see. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> uh, but they have a clip over here. I could just take it and clip it and raise it. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten. We'll do a ten. No, that's still too low. There. Now the lights are not touching these domes over here and the humidity mat is on this side so I can easily connect it to um, a power outlet. So for now it's going to hang over my washing machine and I have some laundry that I <laughs> still need to finish tonight before I go to bed uh, but I'm gonna get an extension cord so that I can have it go across this way and I'm not gonna show you over here because I have a little bit I have some laundry over here that <laughs> I need to do also, but that's okay. Uh, you don't have to see that. Let's see if we can set the thermostat on this thing so that we can um, have this uh, heating mat ready for the ginger and the turmeric. Turmeric. So one of the videos that I watched on uh, growing turmeric uh, and and ginger as well because they're very similar uh, is that they want a temperature about 85 degrees. Uh, so let's see if we can fix this thing to be 85 degrees. Right now it's 58. Let's see. Set. It's set to 69. Okay. 70, 72, 73, 74, 75. Okay, we're just gonna keep going until it reaches 85 because they are a tropical plant and they love the heat. Oh, one, go down a little bit. Okay, so you have the up and button, up and down uh, buttons. And I'm gonna click set again. So let's see, set, it's at 85. Very good, all right, that's awesome. And it fell because I need an extension cord. <laughs> there we go. Let's go grab the turmeric and the ginger. I'm gonna leave the camera over here because I can't carry the camera and those seed tra uh, and those trays. Okay, so I got now the ginger in the back over here and the turmeric, and they're both sitting on this heating mat. And you can see most of the ginger tray is sitting on the heating mat, so I think it should be okay and the turmeric, the whole thing is sitting on the heating tray. And I think I'm glad I did uh, put the domes on this because with the extra humidity and with this fan blowing, let me turn it off for a second so that you guys can hear me better. Uh, it's going to dry up the so soil super quick, so I would have to water it probably uh, a couple times a day. And I prefer not to do that, so I'm just gonna leave these humidity domes on them until I start seeing some growth. If I notice anything growing on the soil, I'll just take the humidity domes off and I'll see what I can do about it. But I don't think uh, that anything is gonna grow on the soil soil because uh, it's not extremely moist, it's just a little bit of moist. Anyways, you don't want it to be super moist because that's going to cause your uh, rhizomes to rot. 
so you just want it to be just moist enough so that you can uh, have those rhizomes begin to grow and pr produce uh, shoots and green growth on them. Uh, and I have all of the seeds over here. The onions uh, are sitting over here right now. I probably should have pos positioned them a little bit differently so that I can actually see the tags. I need to label my salvia. I'll give you just a quick look in a second on it. Um, and I also put an extension cord. So now this uh, thermostat is right here and I can access it easily. I have some dirt on the floor. I have to sweep it. Uh, I'll do that tomorrow. So everything is set up over here and I did a whole video on how we set up this whole uh, grow lights system over here and you can go ahead and check it out. I'll link that in the description box for you guys to watch. And um, I have some extra tra trays over here that I was washing and I'm letting them dry over here. I'll put them away uh, in their place after um, they're fully dry. I think they're they're almost there. Let me give you a quick look on the salvias. So this is where they're at right now. I just kind of want to let them grow a little bit before I start snipping them off because I want to see which seeds seedlings are the strongest. And I should have set these trays a little bit off this mat because they're absorbing a little bit water a little bit more than I like. So maybe let's go ahead and kind of fix it. Uh, you know what? I'll do that off camera. <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. That was the only one that had a little more water than the rest of them. These are actually, the moisture on them is pretty good. This one has a little bit more moisture than I would like it to, so I just kind of tilted it like you see over here uh, and set it on the top of the tray uh, so that it's not sitting in the tray and absorbing more moisture because there's still a little bit of moisture in here. You can see these over here are, the moisture in here is a lot better than the moisture in here that's a little bit too wet we don't want that so that's why I took it off the um, mat the wicking mat over here and this one also looks good so you can see they're starting to put on their true leaves over here they're a little bit tiny but I did give them um, a very uh, low amount of fertilizer uh, because uh, I don't want them to get burnt so I gave them even less than half because they're just still really little and I don't want to burn them and uh, seedlings that are this little or any type of plant that's just still in that development stage. They do not like to uh, be fertilized uh, with a heavy fertilizer or with a lot of, uh, with a big fertilizer dose because they're going to absorb it all and it's going to burn them. And I use a liquid fertilizer, it's an organic liquid fertilizer. Uh, I think the one that I'm using right now has some fish, some sea kelp and some other stuff in there. Uh, I have a link for it in the description box below if you're interested. Uh, so I just gave them a very low dose of that. And then once they put on a little bit more growth, I'll fertilize them some more. And I'll do the same with these over here with the onions. Once they reach about, I'm coming sweetie, uh, once they reach about uh, two inches or three, about two to three inches, then that's when I start fertilizing them. And um, with the ginger and the turmeric, I think I'm going to do the same. We'll see. So I got to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'll be leaving a video for you over here on how to start onions from seeds. And I'll also leave a video for you over here on how to set up this grow light or the salvias. Which one? Hmm. We'll see. One the time. When I'm editing this video, <laughs> I'll figure it. I'll figure it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye. <laughs>